In this video, I want to show how to make this scene. Bit of a spooky subway scene. And, uh, I mean, when you look at it like this, it's not very spooky. This is like a brick. And it's very simple. Uh, but I'm going to go through the elements that make up the scene and explain how I made this. I mean, it's a cloth simulation. But I'll uh, share some tips on how I, I, I do this. And, uh, yeah, basically... It's this. I started off just uh, blocking out a simple little subway scene. And it's just this. It's like a hallway. And it's got this, you know, step here. It's got these pillars. The walls and the floor and the ceiling. It's just this concrete texture from Ambient CG. If you want to get the exact one, it's like uh, Concrete 033. And uh, this is uh, just a concrete wall texture, concrete wall image texture, and that's it. Goes into the roughness and the base color, so there's not a lot going on there. And uh, one trick that I learned from a friend, shout out Strella, is when you have uh, an array like this, you're going to get re a repeated object. And the texture is going to repeat as well, which might look a bit uh, weird. But as you can see, that's not happening here. Like each pillar has its own little variation. Uh, and that's what's going on here. If you're in the array modifier and you go down to UVs, you can do an offset. So the offset U offsets it on the X axis pretty much. I don't know what, oh wait. Is that what UV stands for? UV? I don't know, dude. But the, and the V is like on the uh, Y axis. So you see like they move upwards, but like each one moves, like the, the one that's in the back moves more than the one that's like here. So they're all gonna have like a different UV map. And if you actually apply this, I show you what's actually going on. That's how the UV map looks. It's like making a staircase out of it. So that's a nice little tip. And these lamps, do they even have a material? <laughs> I guess not. Wait, really? I didn't put something on there. That's crazy, but it's it works, I guess. And the, sometimes they have these kind of grids like this. And the thing is, like, this doesn't even show up in the final render. So why did I bother to make it? I don't know, but it could have, like, I didn't know if it was going to be visible. Like, it didn't end up being visible, but, you know, it's, it was, like, easy enough to, to model. So who cares? So it's this little shell, these, this grid, or this uh, these things. And then inside, it's just a pipe. Uh, it's this, and it has an emission texture, and it's actually, that's what's giving me off the kind of greenish color. You could have gone for, like, any color, but I wanted it to be green, to give this kind of spooky or, like, kind of disgusting feeling, you know, because, like, when, when these things get old, like, these kind of lights, they start giving off a more green light, so I try to kind of exaggerate that, because that light is kind of not nice in a way and I didn't want this to be a nice scene I wanted it to be like a bit uh, uncomfortable so to speak so this is how it looks raw so to speak I did some editing in Photoshop later which I'll talk about and then for these other like well modeled things I didn't make these uh, I got these from blender kit this add-on uh, and for this I like searched for cone probably and then i always take this one i don't have a membership uh so you can only get free models uh but there are some good ones same for for like uh, this one and the ladder and the side just to get some more detail in the scene maybe it's like abandoned or like you're not supposed to be here like they're building something i don't know but yeah just a tip blender kit it's great. Uh, and then for this one, for the cloth 
for the cloaked figure, so to speak. As you can see, there's nothing, there's not even anything in here. Now we're in here looking out. POV, you're a spooky spooker. Uh, and this is just for the camera to focus on. Uh, like I said, this is made with a cloth simulation. So in the physics tab, wait, does it actually still have? Oh, wow. I usually apply this modifier, but apparently I didn't. All right, so now this is like an object. You can see the mesh has been like deformed. Because usually if you have a cloth physics simulation and then you go into edit mode, it's going to go back to its original position. Like this was a plane. Anyway, let's hide that, bring out the one that actually has the physics. It starts off like this. So it's just a plane that is subdivided. So it has this kind of resolution. And then in the middle, right above what, uh, what's, what is the head. So here's the model I used. I think I've, you know, I used this in my, the first kind of tutorial I made. It's a 3D scan model of my friend. He's kind of just um, squatting like this. And that's kind of the position I wanted. Yeah, so I made this kind of hole shape above his head. And uh, so this has a cloth physics thing. And the settings I use, the main ones you want to like be concerned with is like quality steps. I think the default value here is like uh, five, but I usually go with 10. Vertex mass is like 0 0.3 by default sometimes i just you know bump this up if it looks like the cloth isn't heavy enough when you run the simulation like if you wanted to like sort of settle more on the object i didn't change any of these for this simulation internal springs i don't even know what that is pressure no idea dude shape nothing here quality this is like two by default you can increase that even more, it's like 15 if you want. Uh, distance, probably you want this as low as possible because otherwise there's gonna be like a bit of a gap between the cloth and the actual object that it's colliding with. And uh, that's pretty much it. I probably should have done it here as well, like it lowered it. So those are the main settings I am I was concerned with, I would say. And then for the collision, I usually, wait, this does not have collision anymore. Oh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> All right, well, let's set it up again then, because usually I just press that button and that's it. Yeah. It's not going to turn out the exact same this time, I think. Maybe it will, kind of. But as you can see, it's like kind of laggy. It's pretty heavy computing. That's how I achieved that basically. But in here in the collision, you can also change some things. Thickness outer. You want to probably set that as low as possible because that's also going to, you know, cause a gap here. I mean, it doesn't really matter because like this mesh won't even be seen in uh, the final render. So. But yeah, just something to keep in mind. And of course, you can't forget the volume. Just a cube around the scene. Uh, viewport display. Display as wire. Turns into this little thing. And then principled volume as the material. And for this one, I had a density of 0 0.2 and anisotropy, anisotropy, anisotropy. Okay, so apparently it's called anisotropy. And yeah, those are the settings. So actually, one thing to show here is uh, you want the mist pass. So let's go through that as well. You go into layers and under passes, you want to just click this box mist and then here you then you select the camera go into the data properties under viewport display you want to also click the mist so that's when this line shows up that's like coming out of the camera 
and you get two dots as well uh, and those dots or this line you can edit in here in the world settings mist pass so this is where the mist is going to start and this is where the mist is going to end usually i just go all the way throughout the scene so like it ends here where the hallway ends okay so yeah i'm actually not using the mist pass you can use it in in here as well to do some editing uh but as you can see like this goes into an ad and it's all black so it's like not even being used i mean i don't have anything <laughs> to show here like you have to render it for it actually to show something uh but i usually i sometimes use glare and always use lens distortion Usually I go for 0 0.01 for both of these. Sometimes this one's a bit higher if I want like a bit of a more fisheye effect. And you always want this setting fit. But to actually get the mist pass, what you usually do is you hook it up. And if you have a lens distortion, you have to hook it up here first. Because otherwise it's gonna not link, like it's not gonna be in sync with the actual image. I made that mistake for this specific render, but then you actually, yeah, you put it into comp composite and then it's gonna show up here in the render result. And that's when you save that image and you save as a separate file and it's gonna look like this. That's what you're gonna get and that's what you're gonna use in Photoshop later or you can probably use it in like GIMP as well, but uh, I'm gonna show you how to use it in uh, Photoshop. All right, we're here in Photoshop and uh, this is what came out of Blender. This is the raw file and it looks okay. Looks kind of spooky. Can't even see what's going on in here. Like who's in here? But uh, basically the first thing you wanna do is grab this, put this as a layer, go to channels and then, con okay, so basically again, <laughs> I learned this from Max. Hey, you can go watch his Photoshop tutorial and you'll be set. Uh, I like all the methods used here are from his video. So, uh, but basically you control click any of these red, green, or blue. What you do is you have this empty layer, you create that and then you press add layer mask and it creates a mask based off of this after that you pick a color from this scene so i probably picked like something like this a bit of a green cyan color here and you fill that entire layer with that color okay you right click the mask and then apply layer mask and then you have this layer and then you want to press the add layer mask again fill that as like just make it black and then pick your favorite brush i usually go for something like this make it white and then you can make your little mist thing going on here there's like some smoke some mist you can draw that in and give it some more like texture in the background. And I did something like that. And I think I lowered the intensity. So it's like the opacity is uh, at 62. All right. Then you can also add some lens dirt if you want. And uh, that's a free pack from Action VFX. I think you like sign up for their newsletter or something and then you just get it. Mm. Lens dirt. Yeah, Action VFX lens dirt. And you get these kinds of photos or kinds of images and here i used like something like this so you add that i add this pick that layer blending mode is screen and uh, for this one i also used a hue saturation layer i guess you can also just go into image adjustments and go for hue saturation because this looks th this dirt has kind of a red tint to it so you like i would want to match that with the lighting that's going on in the scene 
so we want like a kind of green color going on if we can get that or blue green yeah something like that that's a bit too green probably you want to match it basically and then here you can again do a mask fill it with black and then you can paint in like where you want the actual lens dirt usually where there's like a lot of lights going on uh, i mean this is looking a bit weird but uh, i mean it looks it looks fine um maybe you don't want that intense of a brush uh but yeah you can also like decrease the intensity here yeah there's this as well so what you do is you want to combine all of these layers so the like the bottom raw render and uh, all, like the lens dirt the mist everything and the hue saturation i guess for this one so you you click the top layer and you then you want to hold control shift alt and then press e and then it combines all of those layers and makes a new layer basically and when you have that you want to go to filter convert for smart filters go into camera raw filter and then you can like go back here and change the edits basically here you want to you know make some adjustments to make it look cool uh, if you ho hold alt uh, when using this slider, the white slider, you can see where it's like clipping. So where it's actually white, that's like completely white. And here it becomes like completely black. So it's cool to have some contrast. Like uh, you can change the vibrance, saturation, all of that. It's usually good to have some grain. And you should go for like 15 or 20 something here. Whatever you want, you know. And also, you know, you can have some vignette. That's pretty cool. Not too much, but like, yeah, a little bit is cool. That's usually all I do. Let's compare. That's what I actually went for. But I kind of like this better. It's more spooky. Uh, and then the final thing you can do is add a lookup, color lookup. And you do that by pressing this circle down here. And then color look up and then here you can pick between like different filters basically and uh, i usually really like these kind of fuji turna like these kind of old school camera type filters what i actually did use yeah i used this one kodak 5205 whatever you know but uh, i usually don't go for like 100% opacity, so here's the 65, but yeah, that's optional, you can do that if you want, but that's it, that's the Photoshop edits, I hope that wasn't too confusing, but yeah, just go watch Max Hayes' video, honestly, <laughs> that's it, thanks for watching, bye.